here is some more practice uh, drawing chair structures and uh, various discussions of the technique. So say we are given this structure shown here and we're asked to draw both chair structures of this uh, cyclohexane and decide which is higher in energy and which is lower in energy. So of course the first thing we want to do is draw a nice chair structure. Hopefully we've been practicing this when we're at home watching TV or bored in class. Let's try that again. Sometimes it just takes extra time to get a really nice chair structure. And it's really worth taking that time, I think. So we want to ensure that we have three sets of parallel lines. And I, I have that more or less here. So we'll, we'll go with this one. The next thing I'm going to do is start numbering my original drawing with some arbitrary numbers. This has nothing to do with numbering in terms of the name. Uh, it's just a matter of me being able to keep track of where these substituents are. And since I started in the upper left uh, with number one, I'm going to start in the upper left right here and give that a one. I'm going to number in the same direction, two, three, four. And then on carbon number one, we see an up tertiary butyl group. And so I can draw up an axial in this case, because carbon 1 is an upward facing carbon. Carbon 2 has a downward facing chloride, and that is also an axial group, but it's pointed downwards. 3 has nothing, and 4 has an upward facing OH group. And carbon 4, being a downward facing carbon, has an up axial bond. Alright, so now we want to draw the, um, the chair flip. I'm going to draw the other chair structure. And then I'm going to follow carbon 1. Remember that it flips down and becomes a downward facing carbon. So now carbon 1 is this one here. Numbering around again, uh, I think that's counterclockwise, we get these numbers. And now for carbon 1, we have an upward facing T butyl group. Now upward facing means it's on the equatorial bond. And 2, downward facing chlorine, it's on the also on the equatorial bond. And notice I'm drawing these bonds so that they're parallel. Let's see if I can, can make this more obvious. So if this is a green bond here, these are parallel to that CCL bond. And carbon 3 has nothing exciting happening. Carbon 4 is where the OH is. It's in an up position. It is up an axial in this case, and so it's not parallel to anything. It's just simply perfectly vertical, whether it's pointed up from the, um, from the cyclohexane or down from the cyclohexane. The next question is, uh, which is higher in energy? And we can qualitatively assess these by looking for the largest group. And of course, the largest group will almost always be something like this, the tertiary butyl group. And we've learned in class, we read in the textbook, the tertiary butyl group is virtually never axial, unless there's some really exciting stuff happening on the rest of the molecule, a lot of other bulky groups. In this case, OH, Cl, they're not very big. They don't have a large effect on the stability of, of either of these chairs. And so we're going to say that this one is highest in energy, and this one is lowest. And essentially what we're saying is that if we look at an equilibrium mixture of, uh, or if we look at an, a solution of this cyclohexane ring, and we are able to take snapshots in time, basically stop time and look at the percentage of compound, let's call this compound, or conformer 1 and conformer 2, uh, conformer 2 will be present in much, much, much greater amounts at any point in time than conformer 1 because of this axial T-butyl group. So that's essentially what we're doing uh, when we talk about highest in energy and lowest in energy. Uh, which one is favored when the conformations, the chair flips, reaches equilibrium? Uh, the lowest is favored, and how favored is it? Well, it depends on the size or the destabilizing effect of these large groups. And in this case, we have a very destabilizing tertiary butyl group, so this is uh, very favored. And as I said in class, this can help us uh, in the future when we're talking about reactivity of, say, this molecule, maybe in chapter 7 or 8, uh, it can help us decide how reactive it is because we know that most of its conformers exist in uh, this right side uh, conformation.